We are all very familiar with pressure. We know that it's a force over area, F over A. We have worked on its dimension before. Its SI unit is Newton per cubic meter, which is Pascal. In the American engineering unit system, a common unit for pressure is PSI, pound force per squared inch. However, in chemical engineering, the pressure that we deal with is mostly fluid pressure. Fluid pressure, as the name indicates, is the pressure associated with a fluid, either static or dynamic, liquid or gas. When the fluid is at rest, the pressure is called hydrostatic pressure. Here we have a container with some fluid, and the height of the fluid is h. And we want to know the pressure at the bottom of this container. And since we know that pressure equals to force over area, here there are two forces we need to consider. The weight force of the fluid, W, and whatever resultant force on top of the fluid, F. Therefore, the pressure equals to the total force F plus W over A, which equals to F over A plus W over A. And we notice that the term F over A does not depend on our fluid. So let's call it P0 and assume it's a constant. Therefore, the term W over A, W is the weight force, which equals to mass m times g, the gravitational acceleration constant, and mass equals to rho, the density of the fluid times the volume, and the volume equals to height times the area, area, area get cancel out, this simplifies to rho gh. Therefore, we derive the equation that the pressure equals to P0 plus rho gh. Please note that this equation tells you the pressure does not depend on the shape of the container. It depends on the height of the fluid as well as the density. You have probably done this experiment in class before. Take a reservoir of mercury and insert a test tube into it. Make sure inside the test tube is vacuum. Because of the atmospheric pressure, mercury would rise up inside the test tube. And when it stops rising, the total height would be about 760 mm. This device is a simple barometer, and we can use the equation that we just derived to determine the atmospheric pressure at the bottom of the test tube. Since inside the test tube there's a vacuum, P0 is 0, and we have rho gh, and we substitute the values for the density of mercury, gravitational acceleration constant, and the height of mercury, all in SI coherent units, and get 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth power, also in the coherent SI unit for pressure, which is Pascal. And this is the atmospheric pressure. For standard atmosphere, one atmosphere is a unit for pressure, and that equals to 1.01325 times 10 to the fifth power Pascal, or 14.696 psi. Therefore, as demonstrated by the previous experiment, pressure can also be expressed as a height of a particular fluid known as the hydrostatic head. Therefore, one atmosphere can also be expressed as 760 millimeter mercury. Let's look at this example problem. What is one atmosphere pressure expressed as the hydrostatic head of water? We know that hydrostatic head is the height of the fluid, and the relation between pressure and the height of the fluid is P equals to rho gh. Therefore, we need to know the density of water, and that is 1 gram per cubic centimeter, or 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter, given in a SI coherent unit. Therefore, on the left-hand side, we have one atmosphere, that is 1.01325 times 10 to the fifth power in the SI coherent unit, Pascal. And on the right-hand side, we have the density of water and the gravitational acceleration constant times h. From here, we can solve for h to be 10.3 meter. Therefore, one atmosphere pressure equals to 10.3 meter water expressed as the hydrostatic head of water. 
Since atmospheric pressure exists everywhere, many equipments such as the tire pressure gauge and blood pressure measuring device, and many pressure gauges used in industry, are designed to measure gauge pressure, which is the pressure above atmospheric pressure. Gauge pressure equals to absolute pressure minus atmospheric pressure. If the absolute pressure is lower than the atmospheric pressure, gauge pressure is negative. And sometimes, for example, negative 20 millimeter mercury gauge pressure can be called 20 millimeter mercury vacuum. In American engineering unit system, units like PSIA and PSIG are used to indicate if the pressure is absolute or gauge. PSI, of course, is pound force per squared inch. A manometer is a very simple device that can be used to measure pressure or pressure difference. It is a U-shaped tube containing manometer fluid with a density rho m. Two streams of different or the same fluids flow into the two arms. Sometimes one arm is open to the atmosphere or even sealed with a vacuum. There are different configurations and applications of manometers. But in general, the pressure correlation is like this. If we draw a line here, because for continuous fluid, at the same level, the fluid pressure must be the same. Therefore, the pressure at either left or right arm is P. Based on the equation we derived earlier, from the left-hand side, P equals to P1 plus rho 1 G H1. But on the right-hand side, P also equals to P2 plus rho 2 G H2 plus rho M G the times the difference in the height H1 minus H2. Therefore, we can cancel out P and derive the relation between P1 and P2. If both fluids are gases, because the density of gas is considerably small when compared to the density of the manometer fluid. Therefore, the contributions from row 1 and row 2 can be negligible. And the relation simplifies to this. Let's look at this example problem. There's a mercury manometer with one end sealed with vacuum, and it is used on a pipe during which the gas is being pulled by a vacuum pump. We need to determine the pressure P1 as absolute pressure and gauge pressure in the unit of PSI. You probably see that there's an easy way to solve this problem, but for practice purpose, let's still use the pressure correlation. First, we need the density of mercury given in the SI coherent unit and let's convert the 28 millimeter into meter as well. Since the pipe carries gas, and as we discussed, the density of gas is negligible when compared to the density of mercury. So if we draw a line here, then the pressure here, P, approximately equals to P1. And from the right-hand side, P equals to rho m g times h2. And we substitute the values for all of them. Therefore, P1, the absolute pressure, is calculated to be 3,707 Pascal. Since we need to report the answers in the unit of PSI, we can use this equality, and that is actually one atmosphere. From here, we can set up our unit conversion equation, cancel out Pascal, therefore, P1, the absolute pressure is 0 0.54 PSI. And since gauge pressure equals to absolute pressure minus atmospheric pressure, and atmospheric pressure given in PSI is 14.696 PSI, therefore, P1 expressed as gauge pressure is negative 14 PSI. And those are the answers. Alternatively, you might notice right away that P1 can be expressed as the hydrostatic head of mercury, which is 28 millimeter mercury. And we know that one atmosphere equals to 14.696 PSI, but it also can be 
expressed as the hydrostatic head of mercury, which is 760 millimeter mercury. Therefore, from this equality, we can set up our unit conversion equation, cancel out millimeter mercury, and get the absolute pressure for P1, 0 0.54 psi. And then following the same procedure, we can calculate the gauge pressure, which is again negative 14 psi. Same answer.